Hey there, everybody. Pete Pardo here from CH Tri Quality. Welcome to another episode of the Guitarist Corner. We're a little bit late with this episode. Welcome to June, everybody. We've had a hard time getting everybody's schedules aligned uh, in May, so we figure it's early June. Let's just bring it to you now and we can get the, the most of the crew that we could. So we've got uh, in the house today, we've got Jim Bakke, Sean Tonar, Eric Porter, and Guitar Hack. Welcome, gentlemen, for a little discussion of... Uh, this little thing, thingamajiggy here. Well, this is the small thing. Eric and Sean got the big thing, and so does Jim. Yeah. These are Dunlops, all right? There's there's lots of flavors, lots of varieties. You got yeah. Fox, you got the Crybaby, you've got uh, Morley. I mean, I, there's yeah. like a million of them. Morley men do it with their feet. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. But I think the Vox was the original one. I think was the original, yeah. like the makers of the amps were just kind of stumbled across it one day. And I think it was originally inspired by like a saxophone player that wanted that wah-wah sound. Because like back in the 20s, you know, the trumpet players and the big bands would pull their mute out a little bit and give it that kind of wah-wah sound. Yep. And this was a pedal that was created to try and recreate that without pulling a mute out of your your sound hole <laughs> yeah exactly so, right. just painful. a way to kind of you know modulate the the pitch and then do some different colors with with notes and things and you know and then that's exactly how it works you just plug in and step on it and a lot of players use it differently we're going to talk about a lot of players and a lot of ways that the wawa pedal has been used to great effect uh, over the years throughout this episode but uh like I said, all sorts of different shapes, and sizes, and flavors, and things like that. Everybody's got their preference, right? Uh, I think what's been interesting for me as a Wawa fan, not only playing on them, but listening to players over the years, is trying to discern exactly which Wawa pedal they're using. And some have, you know, a very prototypical sound; others, not so much. But um, yeah, pretty cool little invention. It's amazing how many yeah. use it. Uh, before we started recording, we were talking about how, you know, some guys like to just set it and just leave it at a certain setting. Some yeah. guys like to do the waka, 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 waka thing. Everybody uses it differently. I think they're all pretty unique, no matter how you how you use it. That's the, you know, personal preference, I guess. But yeah. uh, I would say the first real prominent appearance of the Wawa pedal was probably Clapton with Cream, right? I mean, I think that's really... Yeah, you know, yeah. Tim or Hendrix, I think both Hendrix, around yeah. the same time got a hold of it. Hendrix, yeah, yeah. Well, the best part about the Y is it'll take your ten good licks and turn it into twenty. <laughs> <laughs> Very true. Very true. <laughs> yep. So what we've done is we've each picked out our five favorite Wawa moments. I'm sure we'll have room at the end for honorable mentions. And again, Wawa moments could be the use of the Wawa pedal on a solo on a riff, a lick, whatever, however it's used in the song, uh, it's all up for grabs. So uh, we're going to start, uh, we're going to start at the bottom of my Zoom. We're going to go Jim, Sean, Eric, Hack, and myself. We'll go round and round till we get to our number one. And uh, so Jim, why don't you kick us off with your number five? Um, okay, I did 10 because I thought okay. I did 10. <laughs> so I don't know where to start now because... I tell you what, does everybody have 10? Yeah. Yeah. Let's, Probably just it. It. Let's just do it. Okay. Uh, Ten it is. Just a, a short little humorous uh, interlude about Wawa pedal for me. Um, when I was about seven or so, my sister, my older sister was in the folk mass at, at, church, at our church, which folk mass was like the young teenagers, you know, singing you know, folk songs that were vaguely positive and religious. And one of the guys in the folk mass wrote a, I think he wrote a song called Freedom. And he was a guitar player. His name was Tom Shizano. He's a Long Island guy. And that was the first time I ever really heard a wah-wah pedal. I was about probably seven. And it had a fantastic wah-wah solo in it. I mean, it was in church, you know, and I, I would literally go to church a sec. I hated going to church. I literally go to church a second time to hear the folk, the folk mass with the band and him playing that wah-wah solo. And when I was, you know, like seven, we had like a beat up acoustic guitar with two strings on it at home. And for those of you who remember uh, sewing machines, they used to have a pedal. Oh, yeah. 
And when I was a kid, I would pick up the guitar and use the sewing pedal and go, <laughs> wah, wah, wah. and that was like my first, like way before I played guitar, I was like, oh, I want to play like that song, wah, you know, and I used to do the, the sewing machine pedal. So uh, wah, wah has a very strange kind of, uh, you know, interesting beginning for me. Um, and then as I went on and learned about what it actually was, I was like, Oh, that's so cool. Um, so I'm going to start my my first two are not guitar, they're bass. So are we doing the whole list at once? Why don't we do two picks at a time? So okay. Why don't we start that so, way? Don't okay, we? that's good. So my first two picks are um, Anesthesia Pulling Teeth uh, by Metallica, the bass solo, Cliff Burton, okay. the great, late, great Cliff Burton. Uh he used a big old war, uh, Morley Wah Wah pedal, and I remember seeing him in a couple of small, uh, some of the, the tiny venue in 1983 on the Kill 'Em All for One tour, play that solo, boom, ba no 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 no, and it was it was it was so cool with the Rickenbacker and the distortion. Uh, that was pretty amazing because only the only time I'd really heard Wah Wah on bass prominently is my next choice, which is NIB by Black Sabbath. So those are my first two choices. Uh, that bass thing at the beginning of NIB is totally cool sounding. So my first two are bass, the rest are guitar. So cool. those are my that, that's two. very cool. You got some bass in there. Awesome. Yeah. All right, Sean, your first two. You know, this is a pretty versatile pedal. You know, you could use it on just about anything. You can, you know, run a mic into or a pickup and um let's see okay i think uh my first one is uh goes back pretty far early um late 60s uh jeff beck i ain't superstitious which is um you know i can't say that he was a guy that used the wah a whole bunch but that's definitely a memorable tune and um the other one is walk away from the james game nice is a really Killer wah wah infused tune, so, especially yeah. the outro of that song. Yeah, great, great use of it there. Yeah, that's cool. Two great choices. Awesome. All right, we're off to a good start. Eric, what do you got? Well, kind of like Jim, a little story. So when I started taking guitar lessons, <clears throat> I was asking my guitar teacher. I'd bring him certain songs, which I'm sure pained him to no end. But can you show me how to play this? Can you show me how to play that? And he was the one who kind of said, get yourself a distortion pedal if you want to sound like this guy. And the Wah Wah pedal was the second pedal I bought based on his suggestion. So I'm starting with two songs that maybe aren't dynamically known as Wah Wah pedal songs, but they were always songs that stuck in my head. And I'm going to go with uh, Super Tramp, uh, Goodbye Stranger, the nice. solo at the end of that. Yeah. Um, and for some reason, that's one that it's, and it's almost, it's like one note, but the way he just kind of subtly hits that wah-wah pedal to me always just sounded fantastic. And probably the guy who got me interested in guitar, who's pretty much just a plug and play guy, but used a wah-wah pedal on Rocket Ride, I'm going with Ace Fraley. <laughs> that's another one that, yeah. you know, I mean, he was, he was the guy who turned me on to playing guitar and I I don't think he used effects very often. It doesn't sound like he does in most of his tunes, but there's definitely some flange and some wah wah in that tune. So, <coughs> rare appearance for Ace using a wah wah pedal. I'm sorry, Jim, I didn't hear you. Yeah, I said that's a rare, uh, a very rare. He's using that's if he even played that solo. <laughs> <laughs> Let's hope that's, he did. That's him. that's him. You could tell that's him. Yeah. You could tell. <laughs> I love to bust his balls. About All right, that. Hack. <laughs> You're your first two choices. Well, everybody's sharing Wah stories, so I got a quick one. So um, I bought my my first Wah pedal actually at the Guitar Center on the Sunset. Well, Jim would know the Sunset. You know the famous Guitar Center in the Sunset Strip in California. Sure. Yeah, of course. Right. It's got the Rock Walk and all that stuff. Right. Yeah. Coolest thing I ever did, you know, musically was I got to do a gig down there one time and. Uh, remember going into that store and they had a stack of they had a stack of uh you know the crybaby was and that's where i grabbed my first one and plugged it in and yeah anyway quick story what year was that oh my god uh that would have been early 90s 
93, 94 and around there. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Cool. But uh, anyways, uh, yeah, I got a lot of low hanging fruit here uh, because, you know, when I was looking at this list, it's like there's certain things that you really have to mention if you're talking about a wah. So uh, first one I'm going to talk about is Rush Spirit of Radio. Um, I don't know if that's a wah, in the, but it's definitely a wah in the solo. And, um, yeah. you know, it's killer. It's absolutely killer. Flanger on the intro. Flanger on wah the intro. Yeah, solo, yeah, yeah. Flanger, yeah. And, um, and low hanging fruit, you know, cream white room that riff wow well, you know it's yeah that's yeah i mean it's that is without the wah that riff just doesn't work so there you go so those are my my first two cool all right so yeah i mean i i got my first crybaby really early on i think it was the first pedal i ever bought and uh we're, we're talking like 81 or 82 something like that a long time ago and you know that crybaby that the first one i bought that lasted me like 25 years I only like replaced my crybaby like the one I have. Well, I've got the little one, which is new, but my the other crybaby I have I've had, I don't know, 10, 15 years, but the original one lasted forever. I mean, that's quite the workhorse. But uh, the reason why I bought one is because I listened to this guy named Robin Trower and just fell in love with everything he did. And I was like, wow, I want to sound like that. And I remember asking him, what do I got to get to sound like that? And it was uh, Crybaby Wasp. So uh, I picked one up and I've been addicted to them ever since. But uh, I'm going to do a twofer from Trower from my first two choices here. These obviously probably rank way high, but I, it's kind of part of the whole story because he was such an early influence. But I'm going to go. He's got a million songs where he uses the Wah Wah to great effect. But two of my favorites are The Ring from Victims of the Fury and from the BLT album that he did with Jack Bruce, uh, No Island Lost. And on both of these tracks, I mean, man, it doesn't get much better mixing fuzz and a scream and cry baby wah wah through a Marshall. I mean, just this guy, just, it, it just sends shivers up and down your spine. It's so amazing. And I was hooked from that point on. And now anytime I hear a wah wah on anything, I'm listening and I'm loving. So it's, uh, it was, there was no looking back from there. So Robin Trower, The Ring and No Island Lost from, Victims of the Fury and from BLT. So back to Jim. Nice. Yeah, I have a Robin Trower in my in mentions. Uh, of course, he did it. He did use a lot of Wawa. So yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, okay, my number eight and seven, um, a song which bears the name George Harrison, Wawa from yeah. All Things Must Pass. <laughs> that riff is great, and the Wawa that accompanies it is is wonderful um and number seven uh probably one of the most the coolest uh evil guitar riff ever uh, electric funeral by black sal oh, hell yeah <laughs> <laughs> was that on your list was on my list <laughs> oh it's such a good one man it's so cool yeah. yeah yeah great choice very cool. Yeah, we might we might uh, hear more from Naomi today. I think. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A little bit. Yeah. yeah. All right, Sean. All right, uh, my number eight is one that uh, many fusion fans will be familiar with. It's from the first Mahavishnu album, and it's the Dance of Maya. Hell yeah! Yep. So, really, you know, one of the things I like about Mahavishnu is those weird angular chord progressions that john came up with and that is a great example of one and, uh, yeah john mcgarden then, man yep yeah and then it, you know just breaks it down into that donk a donk a donk you know kind of boogie woogie thing and then they jam over it in an odd meter and it's yeah great stuff um so that's my number eight and number seven uh this is another guy that used wah quite a bit and there's some probably more obvious songs that he used it on, including one particular hit that I think will probably be on somebody's list before the day is over. Um, but I'm going with the tune called uh, Sing a Mean Tune Kid from Chicago, number three. And they're kind of overlooked third album, the one with the flag on the cover. Really tasty stuff. And, and yeah, just some ripping guitar from Terry Kath on that one. So Great choice. Thanks. More about Terry Kath later. Yeah. yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Eric. 
Well, I'm going to slide in with Sean. I, I was going to go two fusion picks, and the Dance of the Maya was one of mine, uh, John McLaughlin as well. <clears throat> so I'm going to throw that in at number eight. Number seven, I'm going to go with a Scott Henderson tune, uh, Hellbent Pup from his Dog Party CD. Oh, cool. And that's a really excellent wah-wah tune. So check that out if you haven't heard it before. Yeah, he uh, uses the wah quite a bit in more recent times. Yeah, good choice. Great player. Great player. Yep. All right, Hack, back to you. All right, this is the lowest hanging fruit. This is like when you get a wah, this is the first riff you're going to play. It's the first riff I played, and it's Jimi Hendrix, Voodoo Child. Got to have that in here. That's like, like light return. <laughs> light yeah. return. That I mean, is like, like at the top of the list, man. Yeah, oh, that's yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah that is <laughs> the, the godfather of wah song. Um, the next one may not not as obvious, but uh, Cult of Personality, Living Color, that crazy ass uh, Vernon Reed solo. It just the guy's just going ape shit, and he's cracking the wine. Yeah, that's just yeah, really really great use of it on that song. So yeah, those are my eight and sevens. Cool. All right, my number eight. Uh, I'm gonna go with the second Uriah Heap album, Salisbury, the epic title track where Mick Box goes on this crazy extended wah-wah solo for like two or three minutes. And it's so cool. You can actually hear him click on the pedal right at the beginning of the solo. And then you can hear him click it off when he's done, which is so cool. And it just, it's so lyrical. And I think that was the moment where he decided the wah-wah pedal was for him because he's been using it nonstop ever since. Uh, so Salisbury from Uriah Heap. And then my number seven, back to Terry Kath in Chicago. I'm going to go with uh, I'm a man. And specifically the live version from Tanglewood in 1970, which if you haven't seen it here on YouTube, go check it out. It is a tour de four. I mean, you know, 25 or six to four is the one that everybody always thinks about. But man, listen to him tear away using his Wawa pedal on his Stratocaster on I'm a Man live from Tanglewood 1970. It's absolutely incredible. So savage. And uh, whether he's playing the, the riffs or screaming solos, he does it all. So very cool stuff. Uh, I'm a Man by Chicago and Salisbury by Uriah Heap, Mick Box and Terry Kath. Back to Jim. Good ones. Um, okay, so I just uh, never bothered to look up who actually played it, so I just did. Um, but my number six is uh, the solo in Blinded by the Light by Manfred Manzo. Oh, man, you're killing yeah. me. <laughs> Dave Flett is his name. Dave Flett, yep. Uh, uh, you know, I, I did do a cover of that song, and I got as close as I could to that guitar solo. There's a video of it uh, on YouTube called Stars from Mars with Mike Portnoy and Jeff Scott Soda were on it. And I had fun doing I didn't even actually, here's the funny thing. I didn't actually use a wah-wah pedal. I did it all in the computer, and I, I, um, what I automated the wah wah pedal in the computer on one of my guitar um, plugins, and I sat there for hours just drawing and finally getting it just right, um, because it's a lot easier to do afterwards. I, I, my pedals, uh, whatever. Um, but that is a great, great guitar solo. Um, and okay, for my number five. Uh, I had Voodoo Child or this other one, which was Burning the Midnight Lamp. Good choice. Yeah. Uh, very expressive. It's not a solo. It's the main beginning of the song. Super cool. Uh, so those are my two, Blinded by the Light and Burning the Midnight Lamp by Hendrix. So. Very cool. Sean. All right. My number six is one that's kind of created by an accident i think um you all know the sidelong epic from pink floyd called echoes and you might remember the ghostly kind of seagull sounds in the middle section well that happened when gilmore plugged his wah-wah in backwards you know the output and the input and vice versa and for some reason i don't know what brand it, i imagine it's a crybaby it does this when you plug it in backwards can you guys elaborate on that have you ever tried that no, <laughs> I haven't tried to do that. That's weird. Yeah, so that's like a totally backwards use of it, and that became you know pretty famous actually. That's crazy. Um, and uh, you know, I had "Burning of the Midnight Lamp" on my list as well. 
in lieu of that, I'll go with Up From the Skies, the opener from Axis Boldest Love. Great choice. Be pasty Wah on that as well. Yeah. Great stuff. Yep. Great choice. Yeah, there's so many great Hendrix choices here. It's yeah. So many of them. All right, Eric, your next two. My next two, I'm going to go back to, again, two bands that I loved when I started playing guitar. And this first one, this song has made the rounds on this show before on previous episodes. Uh, Nobody's Fault from Aerosmith. <clears throat> and I am also going to go with number five, uh, Custard Pie from Zeppelin. Oh, oh nice. Yeah. Good one. Yeah, we got to get some page on here, right? <laughs> But, uh, I think nobody's fault was Whitford too. I'm not. I'm thinking that's not Perry. I think it was Whitford. So I know he wrote it. So I'm assuming he played some of the leads on it as well. So. And isn't there one on Zeppelin's "Nobody's Fault But Mine"? Uh, there may be. It's there not coming to me. Riff. Yeah. Hmm. All right, where are we? Hack. Well, if we're doing a wash show, we got to include Kirk Lamet in here somewhere. <laughs> now, I don't, I don't know if if this is his riff. I don't know who wrote this song, but um, and this is a riff, not, not a solo. But there's a song they did for the Mission Impossible 2 uh, soundtrack. It's called I Disappear. And it's just a really cool riff, and it uses the wah in the riff. Now, it, it may be James wrote it. I don't know who wrote it, but there's definitely a wah in that riff. So, And it's a really cool use of a, of a wah in a riff. So that's that's one. i got to find a substitution for Man for Man. So let me go down the list a little bit. Uh, how about uh, Iron Maiden, Prowler? Very true. Yeah. Right. Yep. They got the wide yeah. main riff there as well. So there you go. Yeah. So those are both. Uh, That's a good one. <clears throat> that is. All right. What are we? Number five? Is that what we're doing? No. Number six? Six, six five. Six five. All right. So I'm going to go with uh, Grand Funk Railroad, People Let's Stop the War, off of E Pluribus Funk. <laughs> and that's like your I mean it, that's you know that's the typical waka 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 wah wah from the late 60s early 70s I love it uh, it's, and it's cool because on this song he's got kind of like a cleanish tone but the way he uses the wah wah gives the song a, a nice heaviness to it which is really cool it's funky it's wild and it just sounds like the guitar is talking and I love that uh, so that's uh, Grand Funk Railroad people let's stop the war and my number five Let's go with uh, the Scorpions, Hellcat from Uli John Roth. That solo, when he just like, he literally just, it, it's just, it, the whole song just talks and it's just, I, I absolutely love it. And he, you know, he was a big Hendrix fan and, uh, he, you know, one of the kind of cool guys who like, merge like bluesy Hendrix psychedelia with like neoclassical guitar and uh, just absolutely love that wah wah solo. It's way he's got a bunch of them. I, I had a couple of them listed, but I'm going to go with Hellcat because it's just, it's a short solo, but it's just driven wah wah from start to finish. So Hellcat by the Scorpions, Uli John Roth and Grand Funk Railroad, people that stopped the war six and five for me. And Pete, for what is the guitar he uses now? Is it that it's a sky, sky like he guitar. designed it sky guitar sky that's guitar. a pretty unique looking when you think of it's hard to come up with a unique design that's a really uh different look and it's got a really unique sound to it too it's like you know i mean the, the song i'm talking about is back when he was using just playing right. mats but now he's got it's just the the sky guitar it just sounds really like regal and majestic and it's got this kind of like um almost like a far east middle east type of thing going on there and, and i think that's because it's got all those extra frets and it's yeah it's pretty pretty wild stuff and it's always interesting to see him playing that i've seen him live a couple times where he plays that and it's just it's a weird looking guitar it's huge and yeah neck is so long it's it's crazy great player all right jim back to you um okay so my number four um and so this brings in another little factor to things um, 
uh, sometime in the mid seventies, late seventies, they introduced the envelope filter slash auto wah. So I don't know if this counts. Um, so I have two choices. Um, cause I don't know whether he was playing an actual en an envelope filter or a wah wah pedal on one of them. Um, but they're two, they're two different mahogany rush songs cause Frank is a God. Um, so Jive Baby, the song Jive Baby, I think it's from Mahogany Rush 4, I think. Uh, sounds like it could be an envelope filter because it's very consistent with the note picking. Um, but the other song I chose, I know is a wah wah pedal, is a song called Once Again from Strange Universe. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, which is at the end, you know, it's about a couple that just argues their whole life. And the end, he does this great thing with the, you know, the, basically sounds like two people arguing. Wah, 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 wah. It's really amazing. <laughs> uh, um, and he he had so many great wah wah pedals, but that particular one uh, is just so cool. And uh, so that is my number three uh, from my probably favorite guitar player besides Frank, uh, Alex Lifeson. I'm going to go with a uh, guitar solo and anthem. Uh, from Rush, uh, and I, I don't know if I like the um, live version from All the World's a Stage or the Fly by Night version. I tend to love the All the World's a Stage version of a lot of those songs. Yep. Uh, so yeah, and I used to when my first band, I learned I had to learn how to play. We had to play that song. So really amazing wah wah stuff going on in there. Um, so Anthem by Rush is my choice number three. Cool. And thank you for picking a Frank Marino song because I have Frank on my list with like a whole shitload of question marks because I couldn't figure out which song to pick with so many of them. There uh, are so many, yeah. I was like, hopefully someone can save me here and pick Frank Marino because it's just like, I just, I couldn't pick one. <laughs> God, there's so many of them. So, excellent. Right on. All right, Sean. All right. My, um, let's see here. What number are we on? Are we on number four? Four and three. three. Yep. Four and three. Four and three. Okay. Um, number four. Uh, we were talking about Tony Iommi earlier. We're going to talk about him again now. <laughs> uh, I went with a tune from Sabbath Bloody Sabbath called National Acrobat. Uh, wana, wana, wana. Oh, yeah, that's such a great riff. And it's like that whole song is just drenched in it. And then they get to that. I'm talking to you part, you know, that's super funky there. Yeah, that's, that's great. Wow. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's, man. That's, that's, my favorite Ozzy era Sabbath album is that one. Oh, it's so, so awesome. So yeah, great. Love it. Yeah. And uh, number four, I'm going to go with something a little different. Um, there's an album from Steely Dan called Pretzel Logic, and there is a cover tune on it, which is the only cover tune in the entire Steely Dan catalog. And it's a tune that Duke Ellington had as a theme song back when he played in Harlem at the Cotton Club in the late 20s called East St. Louis Toulou. And basically, they recreated Duke's version, but using modern instruments. And, you know, he had the muted trumpets doing the growl. They call it the jungle growl at the time. It's like, come see this wonderful ethnic music and, you know, wild dancers and all that kind of stuff, you know. Um, and uh, Becker and Fagan decided to record it for this album, I guess. I don't understand the reasoning behind it, but it's really unique. And the main melody is basically the wah-wah trumpet played on a guitar with the wah-wah pedal, and it's, it's brilliant. And then some of the other parts, like there's a great trombone solo that uh, Scott Baxter plays on the pedal steel guitar instead. And just the way they reimagine this for modern instrumentation is is great. Really cool stuff. So oh, yeah, gosh, so brilliant. So brilliant. Great choice. All right, Eric. Four and three. All right. Um, Pete and Jim, I'm gonna tip my cap to you guys because my four and threes are inspired by you guys. So Pete, you started your Southern Rock series, and Jim. I think you've got the whole world back on the Black Crows. So I'm going to start with um, Blackberry Smoke at my number four and the song Restless. And that oh, kind of ties into the Black Crows because Charlie Starr has been playing with the Crows. And he's doing and a great job, I got to he, say. He's fantastic. I got to tell you, I, I've been playing them and my wife would look at me like, 
what are you listening to? She goes, you like, you don't like country. And I'm like, I don't know what it is about these guys, but I love Blackberry Smoke. I've gotten totally into them. And of course, Jim, you've thrown everyone back on the Crows bandwagon. So I'm going with um, No Speak, No Slave from the Black Crows. And that's from uh, Southern Harmony and Musical Companion. Yeah. Go Crows. <laughs> Go Crows. I'm going to see them this summer, too. Right on. I'm I got to say, there's some, there's some pretty furious Wawa wow, wow shit going on in this album oh, right I here. Have one on my, I have one on my runners-up list for I sure. just listened to that before. Is we that started. oddly that free? Is there, that that's my favorite, that one. Is that oddly on that one? Good question. Might be. I think he is on that. I think so. Hold on. I'll tell you in a second. You know who he's playing with nowadays? Cheryl Crow. Actually, no, he's not on this one. Okay. Who is on that one? Uh, Chris, Dave, Steve Gorman on drums, Eddie Harsh, and Sven Pippian on bass. So uh, Eddie. Oh, Harsh. so Rich played all the leads. I guess so. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Or they brought in people. They might have brought in a few people. I gotta look in the notes on there. Yeah. Good stuff though. Yeah. Good to hear a little southern rock. Right on, on Eric. Very cool. All right, Hack. Hack's like looking at his, all his extras, like, all right, what's, what hasn't been? What hasn't oh, been yeah, it's yeah, I'm getting uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're popular picks. What can I say? Um, I whole low hanging fruit, Joe Satriani surfing with the alien. Thank you. Good, gotta have that in there, yep. right? <laughs> right? I mean, you got, yeah, and this might be some low hanging fruit as well. Um, gotta throw some Zepp. Well, somebody's already mentioned Zepp one, but uh. Man, no quarter, those big ass chords with that wah pedal. Oh my god, just crushing. On Song Remains the same, especially. It's just yeah, it, that that riff is just monstrous with that wah going. So uh yeah, those are my two. That's my four and my three. Very cool. All right. Um let's see, four and three. I'm trying to look at what I have left here that hasn't been called out. All right, so let's go with uh tony iomi one more time how about a little turn up the night from the mob rules oh you guys are turn killing the night. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are killing me here <laughs> sorry All man. Right, there goes my number one oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, what else uh how about well since uh mr canzanari is not here tonight i know he would have picked this let's go with funkadelic maggot brain title track eddie hazel man talk about a great instrumental like hendrix inspired instrumental it's one of the great psychedelic funk songs of all time and eddie just like clicks on that wawa pedal in the fuzz and just takes it to the heavens uh amazing amazing stuff funkadelic maggot brain black sabbath turn up the nights back to jim for the top two right um well pete you took uh i had a i had a twofer for number two um but I'll go with the other one and mentioned the one you mentioned. Uh, I'm going to go with Paranoid by Grand Funk Railroad. I uh, almost picked that one. Yep. Yeah, the use great. of the fuzz and the wah together and like yep. such a gnarly sound. Oh, yeah. Um, but that's I also weird. had people let stop the war because I love what he does in that song on that one. Um, so Paranoid or People Let's Stop the War, Grand Funk Railroad. And my number one is, is, is a low hanging fruit, but it's also one of my top five guitar solos of all time. Um, 25 or six to four, the great, late, great Terry Kath, when he clicks the wah wah on in the middle of that song, boom, you know, ignition, so many good ones by him, but that one is just so, uh, it's iconic. So. Yep. That it is. That it is. That's right up there with Voodoo Child on on the yeah. short yeah. list of wah wah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Must yep. <laughs> must have. Yep. All right, Sean, your top two. All right, for uh, top two, um, number two is uh, a break from a a tune from a guy that didn't use wah wah a whole bunch, but this is a really great use of it. I'm talking about Yours Is No Disgrace from Yes. Just that <laughs> yeah, all that. Great. And then what's cool about it, we were talking earlier about how, you know, basically this pedal is just like a big EQ that you move with your foot that scoops 
the mid the mid range in or out. And um, sometimes people just like to leave it cocked. And if you <laughs> cock it all the way back like this, you get this. You take out the mids and you get this really creamy, rich kind of tone. And that's what Howe does on that. Once he settles down, he goes a do 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 be do ba be do 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 do. You know that kind of legato lick that comes after the big wah wah breakdown. One of his greatest solos ever, and uh, and in big part to the wah making it sound so cool. So yeah, that's my number two. And for number one, some people's hot, some people's cold, some people are not too swift to behold. Jamma people are boring me to pieces. So anyway, yeah, that's Frank Zappa from One Size Fits All. I mean, there's so many great wah-wah moments with Frank. It's hard to pick, you know. Probably Willie the Pimp would be the obvious one that most people would think of first. But pajama people is just dripping in wah-wah. Like the first thing you hear is this, this kind of... And again, they were talking about sweeping it. Frank goes the other direction. He clamps it all the way down, so it's like nails on a blackboard, trebly kind of ice picky stuff. Um, so, yeah, great stuff. Got to have suggest- that on here. Yep. Oh yeah. yeah. Awesome. All right, Eric, your top two. Well, speaking of Frank, I'm going two and one with. I'm gonna do a double shot of Frank. So I'm gonna go with Willie the Pimp. I'll throw that one out there. And my number one is gonna be I Am the Slime. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Both excellent. Gotta, ha- gotta have Frank. Gotta. And again, unlimited amount of choices, right? So, yep. Yeah, the two Franks on the list today Marino and Zappa, man. Lots to choose from. Lots to choose from. Absolutely. All right, Hack, your top two. And I apologize. I took your Sabbath pick. <laughs> well, both you guys. So, my number two is Electric Funeral, and my number one was Turn on the Night. So, there you <laughs> go. All right. So, I'm going to go a little further down. Um, so uh, how about uh, how about a little Thin Lizzy? Yeah, still in love with you, live and dangerous. Yeah, uh, some cockwa there, man, and some. I mean, that's one of the greatest solos I think ever. I mean, it just it's killer, absolutely killer. And I, I'm I was listening to it again, and it's a cockwa, but I think he might just maybe just hits it just slightly because you you do hear a little bit of change in the eq as he's going through it but absolutely killer solo and um this is totally out of left field but i always dug this this is a (laughs) this is a great use of the wah how about a little bit of uh, isaac hayes theme from shaft oh yeah that's about as classic as it gets that's classic man that is a killer (laughs) right there man yeah and Absolutely. every seventies TV show that came afterwards. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, there you go. So I, I'll go with those two. <laughs> cool. You know, it's funny how, and I'm not going to pick them either here because I couldn't. Uh, for some reason, I just he, he uses it in such an interesting way. Uh, none of us picked any Shanker songs, but because he doesn't use it in that him. obvious way, you know. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm not going to pick them now. But uh, all right, so I've got two kind of more obscure picks here. So the first one, I'm going old school, obscure 70s prog, a band called Frumpy. Everybody's probably like, Frumpy? What the fuck is that, right? Uh, They have an album called Frumpy 2, and the song is called Duty, D-U-T-Y. And the guitarist Rainer Bauman uh, plays this amazing extended wah-wah solo, which probably one of the first extended wah-wah breaks, I think, in all of Prague, uh, you know, maybe uh, other than yours is no disgrace. Uh, and it's just amazing. Go for the throat. Just never ending guitar solo. And it's backed by these really frantic drums and some great Hammond organ. If you've never heard this song, go check it out. The band is called Frumpy. The track is called Duty. Really, really fun. Great solo. And then taking that to the next extreme. This is a band I've been listening to a ton lately. I just did a ranking the album show on them a couple of days ago, ago. And this guitar player is absolutely incredible. He actually just uh, reached out to me on Facebook today. First time I chatted with him, very cool to hear from him. The band is called Earthless. 
The guitar player's name is Isaiah Mitchell, who actually was also playing with the Black Crows, I think, up until recently. He went back to tour with his own band, Earthless. The song, you can pick any song because on, on, they're mostly instrumental and it's this like psychedelic, you know, jammy stoner music. It's, and this guy plays a Strat through a Crybaby, through, a, I think he uses orange amps. The song is called Uluru Rock. It's one of the most face melting. Wow, I, wow, think I saw you post this. Did you yes. post it on your Facebook? I the new so. album, Pete? The newest what? one? No, it's from a couple albums ago. But I mean, you could pick any of their albums and he's got amazing. This is just one track that I picked because it's the one I've been listening to the most. But it's just basically the solo goes on forever. And it's a, the, the, the dexterity that this guy has and the stamina to go play these like five, 10 minute long solos that just never bore you and you don't as long as they go on for you never want them to end and i've been saying it for weeks this band earthless to me reminds me of an instrumental jam between Jimi hendrix bill ward and geezer butler from sabbath that's what they sound like because that the riffs wow. and the grooves are like heavy like doomy stonery type and then it's like jimmy just playing endless solos with strat wawa you know orange amp or marshall amp and some fuzz that's it and it's so good so the band is earthless the song is uluru rock u-l-u-r-u -U -U rock and the guitarist name is isaiah mitchell and uh any of their any of their songs are worth hearing just uh and he loves cranking out the wawa pedal so those are my my top two honorables anybody jim you want to get a couple i got a couple uh uh robin trower king of the dance from caravan to midnight I really i think the first song love the way he does it on there um a song i've talked about before uh from an old friend of mine who's who's now gone uh jimmy's fantasy by red cross he uses a, a, a wobbly chorus and a wah-wah pedal and it's a really cool solo um Horsehead by the Black Crows from By Your Side. Yep. Gnarly, gnarly wah-wah on That's there. That's the one I was thinking of, Jim. Yeah. Great, great, great. Um, and then, uh, funny, as we were talking, I, I wrote this down right before you said it, Sean. I thought, oh, my God, yours is no disgrace. Oh, yeah. What an amazing wah-wah use of the wah-wah on that song. So, uh, and there are a million runners up, but those are the four that I, I had for me. So, Cool. Sean, you got any left? Oh yeah, I got quite a few here. Um, Sugar Loaf, Green Eyed Lady. Nice. Awesome one. Um, there's a recent Jeff Beck album. I forget what it's called, but there's a tune on it called Hammerhead. Killer wah playing on that one. A, a drop dead riff that sounds like it's right out of the Mahavishnu songbook. Um, Bad Horsey from Steve Vai. Yep. Practically inspired a wah wah from Morley. And the Morley's, you know, so you could really cock those way forward, like almost in this kind of white noise kind of area. They had a big sweep on them. They were also Is that very good warm. or bad? I, I had one and I didn't really like it. I didn't either. I got rid of mine. <laughs> yeah. I tried it. I was like, yeah. Too hard either. to control, right? It was just yeah. Yep. It was, it was extreme, but it wasn't, I don't know. It's like, how often do you need to get that weird with it? You know? I, so. It had the greatest uh, logo cartoon character, though. The Morley men do it with their feet guy with the big bell bottom. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, have, I still have that sticker on my first guitar case ever from like 1977 or whatever. So, yeah, I like the Morley. The Morley's are cool. Um, Uriah Heap, magi Magician's Birthday. Yes. Great. Killer solo with, with lots of wah on that one. Yep. Um, Super Knot from Sabbath. Yeah. Pretty sure there's some wah on that riff. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, Stop from Jane's Addiction has a pretty bitch and wah solo. That's a good night example. And of course, Man in the Box from Alice in Chains has yeah. that big wah riff, you know. Yeah. Um, let Leonard Skinner, Needle and Spoon. Yes. Lots yeah. of lots of wah on that one. Um, and for you jam band folks, the Mama Dance from Fish has some tasty uh, wah wah. Um, and you know that song Up on Cripple Creek. She yeah. sends me, uh, well, it's on the keyboards on that. You know, there's some kind of cool examples of that. I was thinking of like Stevie Wonder, Higher Ground, but that might be like a Mutron phase. I'm not totally sure, but it's very wah sounding. Um, also on, uh, for Wonder on uh, 
you haven't done nothing. There you go. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And and is- and Rufus and Chaka Khan. Yeah, um, we something good. good, which was yeah. written by Stevie Wonder. You wonder, yeah, yeah. Um, and, you know, lots of R and B stuff. You know, the first notes out of "Let's Get It On." You can hear it now. Yeah. Where, Totally. Um, Moon Age Daydream from David Bowie has a pretty cool solo from Mick Ronson towards the end with Wah on it. Frankenstein from Edgar Winter. Wow, 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 <laughs> oh my God. Wow. You, know, you know the one. Yeah, awesome. Oh, yeah. And um, Papa was a rolling stone. Oh, sure, yeah. Black Crows just did that on their new Pat record. Was his home. He played it. Really good version of it, too, actually. Yeah, so yeah, that's kind of my my uh, leftovers there. Cool, Eric, you got any? Just a couple. I mean, we've covered a lot of people, so I want to name a couple of guitar players I don't think we've spoken of. Um, band I've recently gotten into, Kick the Cat from Chicago, Paul awesome, Jazz, yeah. uh, Chris Siebold, their jazz fusion band, but fantastic. That's a great tune with Wawa. John Frashani from the Chili Peppers does a lot of cool Wawa stuff. I'll throw out Blood Sugar Sex Magic, but he uses the pedal quite a bit. And I think he does a good job with it. And uh, Joe Bonamassa, Pain and Sorrow. Um, you know, he's another one. I know people feel one way or the other about him, but I think he's a great player and he's he a uses a lot player. of law in there too. Yeah. I love yeah. Joe. Yeah, yeah. Hack, you got any left? Well, you guys took everything I have on my list. It's Sorry. Like super not. Okay, that's cool. I was just looking up the uh, who played guitar on Shaft, and uh, it's Charles Skip Pitts, who passed away at 65, so he's no longer with us, but uh, died in 2012. But uh, yeah, so, but yeah, all, all the, all the, um, all this stuff that I, you, know, <laughs> you guys picked them all, so I got nothing. No one mentioned Yankee Rose. Yeah, we go. Yeah, I was just sitting here thinking about Van Halen too. The only one I could think of is Top of the World, but I I know he must have used it on those first five records someplace. Didn't he have a? There's a pet Eddie Van Halen wah pedal too, right? Didn't yeah, somebody like, well, make a? So he had to use it. I don't it's, remember him using it a lot. I, I can't think of a tune all. that has it though. He yeah. sounded like he was doing it just by the way he played. He had such a crazy. Oh, and you had a lot of flange right on the early stuff and, yeah 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 that you know. yeah. <clears throat> all right well, what do i got left how about elp still you turn me on nice um let's see uh well here's a really obvious one i'm not a fan of the band but the, the solo is iconic sweet child of mine by uh guns and roses slash gotta have it on there right that's that's like the yeah. perfect good one while. it's a good solo yeah um the rover by led zeppelin yes nice yeah good one and then of course you know cream white room tales of brave ulysses and i think that's all i got what other zeppelin song from the first album Dead days to confused yeah that one yeah yeah, yeah. that's good i mean there's probably a ton more but um there's a there's a song and i i, I no one can tell me what he's using on it it does sound kind of wise but i don't think it's strictly a wah right um i'm talking about the strange way solo ace frilly on hotter than hell oh i don't know it sounds like he's flushing the guitar down the toilet it's the greatest (laughs) solo ever it's like a wah with an envelope filter maybe and some kind of delay phaser on that or something crazy sort of it's it's sort of almost like the solo in uh locomotion by grand funk yes you know yeah, that yeah. weird it's like it's backwards yeah, it sounds thing. like he's flushing the toilet you know yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. well yeah. run would produce that i wouldn't put it past him yeah. like, <laughs> mark bring your toy put your, uh, your guitar in the can here for very me. interesting yeah. so it's like a delay and some flange phasing and and wow wow and all kinds of fun stuff so, yeah it's a melting pot of stuff yeah. going there. but that strange way so i was listening to that yesterday like killer it's yeah it's amazing how many people that don't always say that's their favorite fraley solo yeah it's my favorite yep. yeah, for sure yeah. But yeah back in the day when that when that album was still sort of fresh nobody ever talked about that song or the solo right. it's like they, yeah. it's like everybody's rediscovered it all these years later you know yeah well it's like we talked about the other day pete like baby driver who talked about baby driver nobody ever and now right. all of a sudden baby oh, driver like, oh, like, 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 
was always a fan of both of those. Well, you know, when if you got really deep into those early Kiss records early on, I uh, you know I always love Strange Ways and Baby Driver. Everything on those records are great. So, yeah, very yeah. true. Very you know, true. I was thinking about other prog guys and that, like certain people like Robert Fripp. I can't even imagine him using a wah wah. You know, he's almost like that isn't his style. Steve Hackett, I can't. No. I was thinking Keneally. I know he used. I just couldn't come. Oh, I yeah. was listening to guitar guitar therapy, trying to come through with some stuff, and he uses it fairly regularly live. So, well, you know who comes to mind is Gary Green from General Giant. He used Black to cat. That, like that yeah. that live freehand solo where he just comes yeah. searing in the middle of that. Yeah, great. Does Jerry Garcia use wah wah pedal. He's all about the auto. Like he is the king of the auto wah. Oh, okay. Like Shakedown Street kind of has a. That's it. Yeah. That's an auto wah. He, he okay. used an envelope filter quite a bit too. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Which is yeah, the lazy man's wah yeah. wah pedal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He came out with a pedal that kept you from having. That's next foot. month. Is the uh, yeah. the auto wah? <laughs> it's, it's kind of funny, but the auto had its own sound. It wasn't it kind of a gloppy kind of sound. Yeah, it triggered off the notes you played. Yeah, you know, thing. That's like a, it really didn't sound like I don't. You'd have to work hard to get that sound out of a regular wah wah. You'd be moving your foot constantly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why that Frank Marino song I was talking about, Jive Baby. I'm like, is that a envelope filter slash auto wah? Is it him playing a wah wah pedal? I don't really know. But I know he talked about, you know, moving to 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 an auto wah and using that a lot more often. So I don't know. Who knows. So there you have it, everybody. Our favorite Wawa moments in rock history. Well, not not all rock. We talked about a bunch of genres here today. So if you have any favorites that maybe uh, we mentioned or we didn't mention, put them down in the comments below. Everybody's got their holding out their Wawas. I didn't even know I had this cool crybaby sticker. A sticker yeah, gotta, too. Gotta look at the bottom of the box, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Huge sounds, right? There you go. I'm not taking mine off my board. It's uh, Paul Crone on there pretty good. Yeah, mine too. My big one, yeah. So I, I, I got to switch them out because I think I want to put this one on there and open up room for something else. So uh, yeah. so thanks for watching, everybody. Visit us on the web at www.seatranquility.org. We're on Facebook. We're on YouTube. All together, all the damn all time. The damn Stay time. tuned uh, for another episode of The Guitarist Corner next month for... Guitar Hack, Sean Tonar, Eric Porter, and Jim Bakke, I am Pete Pardo. Good night, everybody. See you soon here on the channel. Take care. Cheers. Wow, wow.